This is an update to the SB200 restoration project. There's a few changes I have made since the first video, so I'm going to go through them right now. This is the original schematic uh, modifications of the SB200. I finally got the 10 and 15 meter SWR between the radio and the amplifier looking real good. We have a new schematic now. This one, I had gotten rid of the Teflon loops and went back to the original 47 ohm and four turns for the parasitic chokes. I didn't see really any difference between that and the Teflon wired loops, so I just went back to what was stock in the original amplifier design. Got rid of the shot keys. They weren't quite working up to par like I thought they would, so I went with 1N270s, which are pretty close to the, what the original diodes were in the SB200. I've got the 15 and the 10 meter all tuned in now. These are the actual capacitor values for the tuned circuit on the input. Some are in parallel because I didn't have 770 cap, so there's some in, in parallel here. There's a 74 in parallel with a 200, but these are tuned in pretty pretty good. This cap was missing here on the original schematic I had on the first video. Forgot to put this cap in there, so if anybody noticed that. Also added 136 puff here because the loading on 75 or 80 meters was bottoming out at maximum capacitance. So this gave it a little bit more room rather than having the, the load all the way to one end. And also, there's a thousand puff up here, so it's actually 1500 puff, which is also part of that 80 meter circuit. And I added a two turn on a little donut core. I was getting a little bit of RF out the antenna relay output, so that took care of that. So everything else is pretty much the same. So I'll go through these coils here and capacitors, the changes made. The 20 meter is now 13 turns. The 15 meters 10 turns and the 10 meters 5 turns. So I can show that. It really should be cleaned up, but there's a lot of splattered rosin and stuff. But it, the thing is, it works really good now. These are the coils the 20 meter, the 15, and the 10 that I actually had to remove turns. You can almost count, count the turns here that are on there now. And these slugs are still out a little bit, but not too bad. They're still quite a bit of room there for adjustment. So this is what we ended up with here. To get the SWR in real well between the radio and the amplifier. The equipment I used to set up the SB200 input circuitry of the RF generator Hewlett Packard HP8647A and that generated enough output to drive this model 411 LA RF power amplifier by EIN. It's good from 150 kilohertz to 300 meg as a precision 50 ohm output that made it quite useful for this particular test. The SWR meter between the linear amplifier and the SB200 is this SureCom SW102HF that does 1.5 to 70 megahertz. So that is coupled into the input circuitry of the SB200. On the output of the SB200, I have this dielectric RF termination, 250 watt, precision 50 ohms. So that is on the output of the SB200. So that's the, the test setup for checking the tuned circuits on the input. Okay, we're going to start with the 80 meter position on the amplifier with 3.8 megahertz. This is the SWR going straight through to the dummy load. Now we kick on the amplifier. And this is the actual input SWR to the amplifier, which is very good on uh, 80 meter position. Now we're at the 40 meter position at 7.2 megahertz. The through the amp SWR is 1.02 going straight to the dummy load. Now we'll kick the amp on at uh, full peaked out RF on the 40 meter band and we have an input uh, SWR of 1.02. On the 20 meter band at 14.300 coming in to the amplifier. Input SWR 1.01 straight through 
Turn on the amplifier. It's peaked out on 20 meters and we have a 1.01 SWR. This is the 15 meter band, 21.300. The input frequency through the amp, SWR 1.02. We'll peek it out a little bit here and check the input SWR with the amp on 1.15 not bad not bad at all okay we're at 29.00 megahertz 10 meters through the amp with the amp off the SWR is 1.29 to 3 to 1 and full power out the SWR is 1.01 on the input. So it kind of actually makes the SWR better than going through the amp with the amp off. I made a little chart here of the results. So in the 80 meter position at 3.8 megahertz, SWR with the amp bypassed 1.01, SWR through the amplifier 1.09, 40 meters, at 7.20 megahertz 1.02 through the amp bypassed 1.02 with the amplifier on and 20 meters at 14.300 1.01 in bypass mode 1.01 through the amplifier and 15 meters 21.3 megahertz 1.03 in bypass mode and 1 dot one five through the amplifier and then 10 meters 29 megahertz 1.30 in the bypass mode and 1.01 .01 through the amplifier this goes up as the frequency goes up into the amplifier and I'm going to explain that in a moment one of the issues with the SB200 and many amps like it that have an SWR bridge built in. This is quite long and it throws the impedance off a little bit. So when you're in bypass mode, your signal comes from your radio through the relay and down through this SWR bridge. At 80 meters, this isn't that much of a problem. It starts showing up 20 meters and above. The SWR will start shooting up a little bit and it's due to a lot of unshielded wiring going on here. Uh, the same can be true with the connections to the input and the wiring going to the rotary switch here is all unshielded. So again at 10 meters or 29 meg you start seeing input SWRs becoming a problem when the amplifier is keyed. But I was able to tune those out with the 10 meter tune circuit here. Um, but still in bypass mode it's still an issue and that's why in 10 meters in bypass mode you start seeing that SWR go up. And this has to be pretty long for 80 meters to get the forward adjustment to go full scale on the meter. You need quite a bit of coupling here so this is quite long. But at 10 meters it could actually be cut in half and then it would reduce some of that issue with the impedance changing due to stray capacitance and so on in here. Going to do some quick tests here on each band SWR into the amplifier with the amplifier in bypass mode and through the amp. 10 meters. This is through the amp. It started in bypass mode. Here's the SWR. It's about the same for both. 15 meters. Set it. Look at the SWR through the amp. Turn on the amp. SWR into the amp, about the same. 20 meter test, do the set. SWR through the amp, and SWR with the amp on, and off again. 40 meter test. Do a set. 
Okay, this is SWR with amp off. SWR with amp on. It's a little higher with the amp on. And 80 meters. Okay, amp off. Amp on. Flip back and forth a couple times and it's fine. Okay, I'm going to leave the schematic up on the screen for a bit so one can take a screen capture if uh, one wants to. And this will be the end of the SB200 video.